Welcome to this um, Tech Week event organized by the Christchurch office um, of Catalyst for um, on behalf of Tech Week. And uh, my name is Christina Hoppner and I'll be guiding you through this introduction to Mahara this morning. I'm really happy to see all of you in the session today. And um, please do feel free to make use of the chat or grab the microphone if you have any questions um, so that I can answer them during the session. But we will also have time after the session or at the end of the presentation itself if you have any questions then. Tech Week is an event organized in New Zealand for an entire week um, surrounding all sorts of different topics in technology. And today I'd like to take you on the journey to ePortfolios because that is one of the software tools that we develop at Catalyst IT. Um, we are open source technologists and um, work with a number of um, different technologies around the world. Um, our headquarters is in Wellington, where I'm located. Uh, but in Aotearoa, New Zealand, we also have offices in Christchurch and Auckland. And then over the pond in Australia, there are three main offices, as well as also two offices then um, in Europe, one in Brighton in the UK and another one in Dublin. And we are also in the process of establishing a Canadian office, which was slightly interrupted uh, due to the pandemic, but uh, otherwise it would have already been fully established in March. Um, right now, though, there's work going on remotely. Um, we are not just working with portfolios, which is our topic of today, um, but work with a whole lot of other open source technologies and work with a lot of organizations in New Zealand as well as around the world. But today we are here to talk about Mahara. Mahara has been established in 2006 um, out of a project um, done by tertiary institutions here in New Zealand who had recognized that it is not enough to have a learning management system, but who also said, well, we need a place where students can uh, collect their thoughts, where students can um, establish um, some sort of a personal learning environment in order to keep their own learning, in order to keep their learning evidence. And learning management systems could not really do that in the past and oftentimes still can't do that right now so that Mahara fits in nicely into that niche and provides those services and um, today I'd like to introduce you a little bit to what Mahara can do we'll take a quick look at um, a small number of examples but you will have the chance to explore them further on your own as well as other examples as well. Now Mahara is being used around the world um, not just in New Zealand but also in many many countries around the globe. Um, the only place that I know Mahara is not present is in Antarctica but other than that the people primarily in tertiary institutions and schools that are using Mahara, but increasingly also in other organizations. So in New Zealand, for example, we have a number of um, district health boards using Mahara for nurse portfolios because their recertification is required every three years. So a portfolio where evidence can be collected, where self-assessment can be done, as well as um, feedback received from peers as well as managers is very well suited for that. On this map, you see the Mahara user groups um, that have been established over the last few years, where it is possible for people to also come together and to discuss local um, local questions um, either for their own regions or for a, a particular country or within that country for a particular um, type of organization. And we are happy to establish more of those. Um, all it takes is a person who's interested in running events, either online events these days um, or also face-to-face -face ones um, when that is a possibility. 
A number of our user groups are very um, active. So for example, the one in Japan meets every year in September for a conference. Um, the German group um, also has a conference every single year, every year or every other year in Germany and then um, in between in other parts of Europe. And also the French community is meeting on a regular basis for an annual conference in association also with a Moodle mood. And the other groups are also meeting on a regular basis. It is, and it is very good to see those communities uh, grow within the larger Mahara community because that way um, it is easier for people also to get to know each other, to work together and maybe even have a project together at some point. But now let's go directly into portfolios. Before we can talk about Mahara, um, I'd just like to lay a little bit of groundwork for portfolios in general and um, just discuss what is this thing portfolio actually why why are we working with portfolios and not just using a learning management system or blogging software what is so important um, with portfolios and it kind of for me comes down to that definition of folio thinking um, the idea was um, first conceived by Helen Chen and colleagues in the United States. Um, Helen Chen uh, works at Stanford University in a number of portfolio projects. And he is summarized really nicely by Vicky Suter, uh, where it says that folio thinking is a process of engaging in the collection, organization, reflection, and connection that leads to a person's ability to speak intelligently and concisely, i.e. tell stories, about one's learning experiences, what they mean and their value, and how the experience relate one to each other. That is a very tight definition of polio thinking and contains a lot of really important uh, concepts. Namely, it is not just a collection, it is not just an archive. Yes, you collect your learning evidence and um, everything around it, but you also organize it. And very importantly for portfolios, it is the reflective element um, that one really thinks back to why have I done that? What was the outcome? What do I want to do differently? What was important for me in that activity? And not just a summary of it. And then besides all of those three things, the collection, organization and reflection, um, portfolios also typically try to connect with others because we are not learning in isolation. We are always learning with others, through others, learn from the experience of other people and therefore the social component is very important. And especially using an online tool and a digital tool helps us with that because we don't have to carry around big binders um, and try to get a comment from somebody scribbled into the margin or so, but no, there can be a proper comment field and um, the, the interactions can also be there so that um, I can also comment on what another um, peer had said. And really, learn through that entire process and also make those comments part of my learning. And what we essentially are doing is telling stories. We are telling our learning story or our learning stories and that can be in many different contexts. That can be to showcase our learning, um, to apply for a new job or in the case of students oftentimes apply for an internship. Um, but that can also be an assessment portfolio or a registration portfolio where we need to demonstrate certain skills in order to um, be recertified for a particular role or to move on to a new role. And through the portfolio, we can make those connections also amongst the learning evidence and not just have things sitting side by side but really interweave them, tell our whole story, and also incorporate content from a learning management system, for example, but not leave it just to that, 
but really make it possible to have formal and informal learning going together in one. Kind of condensing that down now to five different activities that I think are important for portfolio work are the five C's. They are create, because first I need to do something, um, experience something, um, learn something. And then I collect my learning evidence. I collect um, any of that, and that can be text, images, video, audio. Um, it can also be something I created online in a completely different tool and then embed that into the portfolio itself. So creating, collecting, and then the very important um, activity of curating that. Because um, a portfolio is not just everything that I ever experienced and then I hand that over to somebody, but I select very carefully what I want to show in a particular context. And that is where you can have multiple portfolios. So there can be a showcase portfolio of um, all the learnings, the important learnings from one year, but there can also be an assessment portfolio for a particular course that contains the same learning evidence in a different context and then might also have other pieces of evidence around it to support that. And the curative element really is the important one I find for the portfolio activities because for other things we can oftentimes also use other tools, um, but the portfolio really focuses our thinking on the curation, um, on the reflecting and on making sure that we are dealing with those learning experiences and uh, processing, processing them. Then we also have the conversations, as already seen in the folio thinking uh, definition, where we talk through with others, also feedback or give feedback to other people, not just on our own portfolio, but also help them in their learning journey. And then last but not least, our connections in general. Um, because while Mahara is primarily a portfolio tool where students and other learners create their own personal portfolios, we can also create portfolios in groups and allow students to work together and to come up with a product that is a reflection of their collaborative learning. Now, if you wanted to look into a metaphor for all of that, there are many, many around. But one that I'd like to show you uh, today is the metaphor of the portfolio as a museum or as an art gallery. And that was inspired uh, by Mandy Mentes from Massey University. And she is not the only one who has used that metaphor, but she really explained it very nicely to, um, to her students at Messi. And we created a, an illustration based on that, um, inspired by her art gallery, because we feel like um, you can explain portfolios really nicely using that museum or art gallery metaphor. So on the bottom, um, we have the curator who, or who collects all the things. In the case of a museum, we oftentimes don't really have the creation aspect because that is done by other people. Um, but we are definitely having the collective uh, collection aspect and then also organization because everybody needs to find things. Um, transferring that into the portfolio world, um, you can save files in, a fo in folders, organize them that way, and you can also give tags, so keywords and um, therefore make it easier to find all your stuff later on again. Now, when it is time to have an exhibition, the curator goes into the archive and selects the items that they want to exhibit for that particular topic. And that could either be a particular genre or that could be an artist um, or that could be a collective of artists. So while the archive might contain thousands of um, artifacts that could fit into a particular 
genre or for a particular artist, the curator still selects from those and never ever or hardly ever, I, would, I probably have to say, shows everything because they can then tell that story that fits the topic. And then within a museum, we oftentimes don't just have one exhibition, but there are multiple exhibitions and um, transferring that into the portfolio. That means you can have multiple portfolios and they can be very different. Um, and some portfolios, you might also be charged for them. So it's kind of like in a special exhibit, um, the portfolio in general is free, but certain things um, do have a chart. And um, that can then be for the portfolios one where you don't want to give everybody access to because it's either too personal or it is for assessment purposes and you don't necessarily want to share everything. And of course, you can also give feedback and have lots of different artifacts on display. So that is one way of explaining what portfolios are. Um, there's a second one, um, which is also really, really neat. Um, and Hazel Owen from Ethos Consultancy in New Zealand came up with that a few years ago, um, where we can explain a portfolio as a performance. And again, as you can see here from, um, from this illustration, um, the performances don't all have to be exactly the same. One is a theater performance, another one is a concert. Then on the left-hand side, we have somebody practicing first. On the right-hand side, there's the collaboration happening between the writers and um, stage managers to come up with what is to be in the theater performance. And then we also have ticket sales. So restricting access um, for certain performances. And some have larger audiences, others have smaller audiences, and maybe also like in the practice, there's no audience at all, because portfolios can also be created just um, for yourself. There are many, many other metaphors that could be used for portfolios. These are just two of them um, to hopefully also give you an insight into how portfolios can be explained to students or other learners in order to make the concept of the portfolio a little bit more familiar. And we have very good experiences using, um, using these metaphors because they do help um, kind of channel also what the portfolio is supposed to be like in a particular context um, in order to make it easier for students to understand. Now, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that um, the reflection is really, really important um, for portfolios. And so I wanted to show you an example here. Um, and that is an extract from a portfolio by Teresa McKinnon. Um, I do have the link there so that you can look at it more closely later on. Um, right now, I only wanted to pull out certain words. Therefore, you don't have to read the entire text, um, but just focus on the phrases that she is using, which show us how she is reflecting and how she is referring to it. Because she reflects by using things like the point at which I realized I revisited each of the sections of my original CMOD submission. Mentoring and feedback was very helpful. And a highlight was, um, a highlight of my professional development in language education was. So there you see what she had done in her portfolio. A highlight, she doesn't show us everything. She picks and chooses what is important to her. She makes connections with other people through feedback and mentoring. She goes back to what she had learned. So she is reflecting on her learning also with the point at which I realized she stops and takes stock. And that is a wonderful example of how the reflection can be just incorporated into the regular text instead of making it just a summary or a description. Um, of events, but really make it her own reflection, make it her own portfolio. But it's not just on us 
um, to create portfolios. Um, there are other people involved, as we've already seen, with the connections that it's peers and others who can give feedback. But in an organization, it is oftentimes also paramount, as many of you who have already worked with portfolios already know, um, that you need the support. And you need to be able to have the time in order to work with learners. And the support is the process of curating the connected collection, making meaning through reflection and thereby developing deeper, more intentional identities as learners, requires thoughtful student action guided by well-informed faculty and staff and supported by a broad coalition of uh, college stakeholders. This was written by Einan and Gambino, um, particular as you uh, probably guessed for the higher education um, realm, but is also transferred very easily to other areas. So at Catalyst, we work with a um, district health board in New Zealand quite closely, where they um, have started implementing digital portfolios um, at the end of 2018. And um, there we've seen very clearly that the support is extremely important. Um, the learning designers at that DHB created help guides, short videos, and also offered training sessions for everybody who was moving from a paper-based portfolio to a digital portfolio. Um, and they've seen very good successes with that because um, all of that support makes the nurses more comfortable in knowing what they need to know, where they need to start, um, what they need to add to their portfolio, and then don't leave them on their own. And the portfolio that they create is also very much template based. I'll show an extract in a little bit, um, and really helps them be guided along their way to um, create their portfolio in an easy way, yet also in a very meaningful way. And that support cannot be underestimated. And um, hopefully organizations recognize that as well in order to make time available to support any portfolio initiative. Because if, um, if students are just left on their own devices or other learners, then oftentimes that is not enough to keep them on the portfolio because the portfolio does mean quite a bit of change to regular teaching and learning um, so that they do need structure and also scaffolding on hand. And faculty, staff or learning designers need the same so that they can actually produce those necessary activities. Now let's take a look at some examples um, of portfolios that have been created in Mahara. Um, I only made a very small selection and uh, you will be able to click those links then later in the, um, when, when I sent you the presentation in order to take a closer look. This first example is from the University of the Arts London, um, an arts university that has been using Mahara for many, many years with um, uh, visual arts students in particular. And uh, these students use Mahara really as their workbook. The platform is called Workflow, um, where they create collections for assignments, take photos, um, also incorporate videos, reflect on their artwork, um, sometimes also just let the visuals speak. And on that side, you can explore many, many different portfolios and see how different they can look like. Some students work more with images, others um, use font colors and um, different, um, font, different fonts, different fonts, different text sizes to personalize their portfolio and always let their art shine. So this is a very, very typical portfolio, student portfolio where you have the evidence listed and also then reflections kind of combined with a summary of uh, what the student has been researching. Now, the second portfolio is um, more a prescriptive portfolio 
that is highly scaffolded, um, highly templatized um, due to the nature of it because it is an assessment portfolio. It is for nurse registration. Um, and instead of setting nurses in front of a blank page of paper, um, they do get a lot of instructions of what is required of them um, in that portfolio. And so the portfolio is very much competency-based. And here you have an extract from competency 1.1 of the um, New Zealand uh, nursing competency framework. And on the left-hand side, uh, there is the self-assessment from the nurse, um, how she perceives herself. And on the right-hand side, the peer can make their own assessment um, of what they have observed of the nurse. And that continues throughout every one of the competencies. And so in this case, the emphasis is not so much on a showcase um, or on having the prettiest portfolio. It is very much focused on the content and making the creation and the management of the portfolio as easy as possible for the nurse. So the nurse has all the pages already in her portfolio. They all already have the competencies listed so that they really only need to put in their content and then make it available to a peer as well as manager. The third example is from a student who is reflecting and also appreciating her work, um, which is not just about Mahara, but in general about the portfolios. And so you can see again, um, she has worked with images and then also created a poem um, that is her final reflection um, in a study program that she is participating in. And last but not least, um, Mahara can also be used for instructional purposes. So if you don't have a learning management system and or you don't really want to go into um, a more formal course, then you can also have instructions and a course-like structure in Mahara itself in order to keep everything in one platform. When you go to this um, example here, um, you can go through the activities yourself in order to become more familiar with portfolios for educators. A colleague of mine, Sam Taylor, in um, our UK office has created that resource. And there you also see nicely what you can do on the portfolios, how sites can look very different from what you see on our demo site in Mahara. And um, just explore also the possibilities. There are many more examples that you can access um, to which I link on the examples page itself. So please do feel free to look around. And if you want particular examples, you're also very welcome to send me an email um, in order to um, let me know if, um, if you are in need of a particular example that I might be able to help with. Um, oftentimes, we don't have access to all the portfolios uh, because they are very much uh, private and therefore we are bound by looking at uh, public portfolios or those for screenshots that we have the permission to use. Now, in kind of almost a summary, let's take a look at some of the advantages um, that you have with portfolios in general and with Mahara in particular. Um, at first, Mahara is learner-centric um, because Mahara had been set up and built from the idea of a personal learning environment, we always have the student in the center. Even when you have staff permissions on Mahara, you can't access student work yourself. Students always need to give you permission to view their portfolio. And permission can be given in a number of different ways. Um, either by um, you, just to you, to a group, or to the entire world. So it's very, it has a very flexible permissions framework. It can also be used quite versatile um, because Mahara supports all sorts of different portfolio types. You can create the assessment portfolio, a development portfolio, showcase portfolio, group portfolio, and um, any type in between, whichever language your university uses, and therefore it can be used in many different contexts and not just one single one. 
and Mahara is social. Um, you can create groups and interact with people. Um, I'm currently supporting one of our clients uh, with their portfolio initiative in the new masters. And the students have really taken to the group work there. So they are interacting in forums, they are setting up pages together, they are commenting on each other's work. And that's how they can also support each other in their learning. And Mahara is multimedia. Um, in contrast to paper portfolios, where you um, had difficulty oftentimes to say, well, how can I, can I get a video in or an audio and might need to supply a DVD or then something on a USB stick. In Mahara, you can have all in one. Um, you can upload images, video, audio, um, and embed those things directly into your pages. And that's what I really like about the, the electronic platform is that you have these possibilities. Um, because now a portfolio doesn't just have to be text for a student, but students can upload audio files. Um, they can create their own short video reflections. And therefore, we are supporting different learner types better. And um, kind of going back to that definition of folio thinking, where it said this um, telling of stories, that I think is also supported much, much better uh, digitally than we can often do on paper, because we have all of these different media possibilities. And therefore, can let students decide whether they want it to create a mind map um, as their reflection or create a short two, three or five minute video in which they uh, reflect on their learning or also just an audio file. So that also makes it then easier possible for them to create their learning evidence and their reflections no matter where they are, be that on the computer or not on the computer because they could just use their smartphone and um, speak into it and record themselves. It is also supportive and that kind of ties in a bit with the um, with the social learning but also supportive from the technology side um, supportive in a way that you can interact with other people but also supportive in the way that you are being guided to what you can do on each particular page because there's never a completely empty um, or blank uh, page, but there's always instructions available and also um, guidance in terms of what can be done on this page, what is expected, what information is needed, and which ones is optional, so that you do can um, get started very quickly with it. Portfolios can be assessed, um, which has become more and more important over the last few years when um, organizations in particular wanted to go beyond the showcase portfolio or the developmental portfolio, because especially in uh, the tertiary education sector, as well as um, the, the primary and secondary one, our students still want to have grades. So kind of being able to assess a portfolio is definitely an important aspect and we can do that either directly in Mahara with very simple tools very much focused on feedback or we can um, connect it to Moodle, uh, Totara or other learning management systems. Mahara also has a mobile app um, that allows learners to uh, create and record their learning evidence, no matter whether they are close to the internet or not. And then once they are online again, they can upload that into their portfolio. It is also secure um, because we are using all the regular security measures of encrypting login information, um, having accounts for people that need to be able to edit stuff and really have that entire base layer available um, so that you don't have to worry about it, but can really focus on content. Mahada is also accessible um, and we are currently working on the uh, investigating what we will need to do in order to stay accessible with the WCAG 2.1 criteria 
uh, in principles that have been changed quite a bit um, in order to make it also easier for sighted people to access pages. Um, but Mahara can already be accessed via screen readers and um, we do keep up with our accessibility in order to continue offering the platform for everybody. For the assessment, I had already mentioned that Mahara can be integrated with learning management systems. And that is pretty much this point here, um, because it is possible to use Mahara with um, LMSs in particular through LTI, the Learning Tools Interoperability Standard, where you can, um, from an assignment in the LMS, link to a portfolio and then the grade that you give on the portfolio will be pushed back into the LMS. For Moodle and Totara, we have tighter integration available through a plugin that we just released a couple of weeks ago, um, which makes it possible to use your regular um, grading um, methods that you have in Moodle and Totara, and therefore really make it possible to integrate it with other learning that is happening at your organization. We can also connect to um, single sign-on, for example, and um, customize Mahara even more via web services um, and then more on the non-technical side, also show a different theme. Um, you will have seen on the examples or will see even more so when you explore them on your own um, that every Mahara site can look different. And it is entirely up to you what it should look like um, because Mahara can be themed and since it is open source software, you're very welcome to change the look and feel of it. And last but not least, Mahara is also portable or Mahara portfolios are portable. Um, which is very important for lifelong learning because um, a student does not stay at school all um, for the rest of their lives. And while we do support um, that alumni can keep their portfolios in Mahara, because that is really a just up to the organization, um, some may not wish to do so. So what does the student do at the end of their studies with their portfolio? Well, ideally, they can export it and put it into another platform, um, be that a Mahara or not, or at minimum, uh, keep it on their computer. And so we do have three export formats. Um, one is HTML so that it can be viewed in a browser without Mahara. One is the Leap to A format, which allows it to be pushed back into another Mahara instance or also into another um, site that supports that Leap to A standard. And the third one since April this year is also PDF. And um, that is in particular good if it does need to be um, pushed into an LMS for um, moving it also through um, plagiarism software as well as also long-term storage. And the nice thing with that PDF is that all the artifacts come along so that if you do have videos in your portfolio, you're not losing them by having that PDF option, but they are still retained and available in the download that comes with it. So 12 good reasons and advantages for Mahara. There are um, a whole bunch more, but I find these are very important ones to showcase the, the versatility and um, also the possibilities that you have with the platform, not locking you in in one way of thinking or one way of learning and using it, but really um, exploring its potential in order to find the way that you want to use portfolios at your organization. Now, um, we do have a lot of functionality in Mahara. It is not a one-click um, application, but has lots of knobs to turn and um, possibilities of creating content. And therefore, we do have a menu in which all those functionalities are explained, um, are available, and um, you can read up on them. 
Um, we also have a community channel where videos are um, stored for presentations that people have done on Mahara in order to give you an idea of what people around the world do. And there is also a, a quarterly newsletter that is published and gives insight into how people use Mahara. And I'll send those links to you in, in a follow-up email so that you can explore um, these areas all further. And just some promotional advertisement um, for you for things now that you might say, well, yep, I'm interested in portfolios or if you have already been using portfolios, you are still interested, wanting to learn more. Um, there are some really fantastic resources here listed that do not talk about Mahara itself, um, but who talk that talk more about um, portfolios in general what can be done, what should be considered, and um, why are portfolios good. And they also give a very good literature overview. The first one on the left is the Field Guide to ePortfolio, uh, which has been uh, commissioned by ABLE and published by AEC and U, the Association of American Colleges and Universities. But we've tried to, to bring in also other perspectives. So there, there are a couple of international contributors in um, that book. And uh, the field guide really gives a very brief overview into all of the 12 topics that it covers. Um, so that it could also be seen as an executive summary to implementing portfolios at an organization. The second publication is about 40 pages long. Um, and reads really, really well and was um, um, developed by Dublin City University and researched by um, researchers there. And it is the learning portfolio in higher education, a game of snakes and ladders. It is, gives a very, very good literature overview as well as also examples of what people do in um, with learning portfolios in different contexts, as well as also an outlook of what um, they consider would be a good way of using it and what should be considered. And the third one is a pure online ebook publication um, edited by Lisa Donaldson from Dublin City University on ePortfolio based assessments. And uh, that publication is uh, really a very nice one, uh, giving insight into lots and lots of different um, scenarios when portfolio-based assessment is being used. Um, the examples are primarily from the UK and Ireland and um, deal with tertiary education in particular and are all small vignettes that give a quick insight. So all three publications are relatively short. Um, they are free to download um, or to access as in the case of ePortfolio based assessment and um, make for very good reading in order to get a good sense of uh, what you might still want to look into in your own portfolio explorations and um, also further thinking of how you want to use portfolios. And if you have any questions uh, for portfolios and um, in general, or also Mahara in particular, please do feel free to contact me after the session via my email or also via Twitter, and I'll be happy to answer your questions.